In this video, we're going to add zooming with the mouse wheel. And I'm going to create a quick shortcut to my Visual Studio project here. And then I'm going to open up Visual Studio. So we're going to be working on the root class today. So in the header, pound include chord Godot. And then pound include node 2D because that's what root is. Pound include input because we're going to be doing input. Pound include input event because we're going to need to process that. And then pound include input event mouse button because that is what the mouse wheel is. And then also pound include global constants for the constants that tell us which direction the mouse wheel is going. And then I'm going to pound include STDIO just for debug. This is so that I can do printfs and stuff while building the game. You can include it or not. And then I'm pound including player.h because root is going to have a player that it's going to access. Um, in namespace Godot, class player, and then class root will be of type public node 2D. We need our Godot class macro for root and of type node 2D. And then for public variables, we're going to need a static player pointer. Call it pplayer. And then we're going to need our static void underscore register methods, as always. And then we also need our void init that we always need. A constructor and destructor. And then I'm going to do void handle input event. And this is purposely named differently so that you can see that you can name whatever, however you want in your actual code and map underscore input to our handle input event. And then I also need process M wheel, which will be where we actually handle our mouse wheel action and do our zooming. So in the C++ file, we're going to pound include our header, of course. And then we're using namespace Godot. We need our, our static player pointer. And then we need our underscore register methods, like always. And we're going to register underscore input. And we that is what Godot sees it as. And then we are pointing to our handle input event as in our code. So the name that you use doesn't matter. You just have to map it that way. And then we need a init function, and it can be empty. We also don't have anything to put in our constructor or destructor right now, so those will also be empty. And then let's work on actually handling the input. So handle input event. We'll take an input event pointer. And we're going to make a const Godot string. And it's just going to be input event mouse button so that we can check if that is the type of input event we got. And then we want to get a Godot string returned from get class on the input event that we took in. And then we're just going to compare the class name to input event mouse button and see if that's the type of event we have. And then we're going to process mwheel if that is what it is. And we're going to just cast our input event to input event mouse button because we, at that point, know that it is a mouse button. And then in void process mwheel, we take in an input event mouse button pointer. And we are going to grab int 64t button index from the get button index method of our input event mouse button. And if the input event is pressed, then we want to check if the button index is global constants button wheel down. And then if so, we're going to make a vector 
to the player camera, which we did not do yet. So let's just comment this as to do zooming later. Else we're going to check if the button index is button wheel up. And then we'll zoom the other way. Okay, now let's actually get a camera on our player so that we can do this. So in player header, we need to pound include camera and root. So pound include root.h and pound include camera 2d. And then as a public variable, we want a camera 2D pointer, and we'll just call it P camera. And then we also need to declare our ready function so that we can get that called from Godot when we first start up. So we need to add to our register methods, register method for the ready function. And then we need to point it to our ready function. And then let's add a ready function. So void player ready and we're going to do a const Godot string for camera 2D so that we can know when we find a node that is of type camera 2D. And then we need a node and an array as we walk through the list of children. And so the array is going to be get children. And then we need an int 64 T for the child count, which is get child count. And we're just going to do a for loop. So int 64 T x equals zero to child count. And then n is going to be get child x. And if the camera string is equal to n get name, then we have the correct named node. So then we want to set our p camera pointer to cast it to a camera 2D star, and it is of n. And then we also want to set p player on root to just this. And then in root, we can now do our zoom. So we need a vector two, we'll just call it v, and uh, we're gonna grab p player, the camera pointer off of p player, and then get zoom. And we're going to do x and y are the same. So v.x equals v.y equals v.x times 10 over 9. So we're going to, in one direction, do 90%, and then in the other direction, the opposite. And then we're going to cap it. If v.x is greater than 1.25, then we're going to put v.x equals v.y equals 1.25. So the other zoom, we are going to get a vector again from player camera get zoom. And then v.x equals v.y equals v.x times 0.9. And then p player, p camera, set zoom. And we just set it to the vector that we made. And then we get warnings because we are casting doubles to real. So let's just add Fs and that'll get rid of the warnings. And then we need to go to Godot library.cpp and register our root class in the Godot native script in it. And then that should be it. We also need to pound include root.h, of course. 
and then that should actually be it. So let's build it. And let's go to Godot. And then we will attach the script to main. And the class name is root. It is a native script. And then uh, let's also call it root for the GDNS file. And then let's create it. And we also need to set the library. So grab our mazecpp debug.gdnlib, drag it over, and then we are ready to run it. And we can only zoom in and not out. So let's fix that. Go back to the code and see what I missed. So in root.cpp, I did not set zoom on one of the zooms. So p player, p camera, set zoom to v. And that's it. So now let's build it again, and hopefully it works now. So then let's run it, and we have both zooms. And so let me now add the ability to hit an escape key because I am running in full screen for this video. So I'm going to in root.h pound include event key.hpp and scene tree.hpp. And this is so that I can quit on a key press. So in handle input event, I'm going to do another const Godot string, and this one will be input event key instead of input event mouse button. And then I am going to check if the class name we got, GS class, is equal to the Godot string that I just made for input event key. And if it is, then input event key pointer will be returned or cast from our input event. And then if k get scan code is equal to global constants key escape because I want the escape key. Then I'm just going to quit. So get tree, quit, and that's it. And this should hopefully allow me to hit escape instead of alt F4 to get out of my running game. And I also can't walk into the exit, but escape works. So let's go to our exit and change static body 2D to area 2D. And then change its name also so that it doesn't confuse me later. And let's run it now and it should hopefully all work. So we can go behind it, yeah. That's the end of this video.